Hi, kids. So this is Frayvel. How are you? Good. Or I'm sorry. I'm, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Okay. Hi. Welcome to uh, the first lesson in marine biology slash oceanography. Today we're going to talk about what are marine biology and oceanography? What are you going to be learning about in this class? Okay, so marine biology and oceanography are two separate disciplines in science. There are scientists who are oceanographers, and there are scientists who are marine biologists. I need to pause and um, make, this, make this look right. One moment, please. Hey, that's better. Sorry, guys, it's, uh, it's 4.15. It's been a long day, but that's okay. So this is uh, day one of marine biology and oceanography. Let's talk about what are marine biology and oceanography. Okay, so uh, you should be taking notes. There is a note guide that is um, embedded under this video as a Google Doc. You should open it, um, and, and I, at the end of this, will show you how to file it in your Google Docs. Don't let me forget to do that. Somebody remind me to show you how to do that, okay? Anyway, there's a note guide. What I would recommend is that you have that window open and this window open next to each other. Hopefully you know how to do that. You guys are the I generation, you know how to do that. Anyway, you should be filling in the note guide um, as you go, because you, if you're working from home, um, you should submit that so that I know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, okay? All right, so fill that in as we go. Here we go, so oceanography and marine biology. Let's start with oceanography. Oceanography is the study of the non-living or what we call the abiotic, Abiotic means without life, parts of the ocean. The things that we're going to talk about as we go through each ecosystem is uh, we're going to talk about the abiotic factors and the living factors as well. Um, so we'll talk about the salinity of the water. That's how salty the water is and also the water's temperature. We'll also talk about the pH of the water. We'll talk about the currents. That's how the water moves. Okay, how water in the ocean moves. Uh, it includes the tides uh, where the ocean meets a landmass. The, there is a tidal force, a tidal uh, measurement, and we'll talk about how tides work. And then also we're going to talk about the zones of the ocean and the sea floor, and that will become important as well. So those are things that oceanographers tend to study. It also includes stuff like the substrate. What kind of geology is there? in any given area. Is it rock? Is it sand? Is it gravel? Is it volcanic? Is it silt? Is it mud? Um, those types of things are also included in the non-living study. Okay. Uh, so what is marine biology? Marine biology is the stuff that, that's alive. It's the study of the organisms that live in the sea, including all water that has some degree of salinity in it. Um, including where rivers dump into the ocean. Those are called estuaries or deltas, river mouths. Um, we are only going to be talking about the ocean. We're not going to talk about uh, lakes. We're not going to talk about rivers. We're not going to be talking about freshwater ecosystems um, at all. This is strictly saline ocean water. Okay? Um, marine biologists also study both the plants and the microbes in the ocean, including algae and plankton. Uh, they, the living organisms that are studied also include all of the invertebrate groups of animals, which include these groups that we are going to talk about as we go through this course. Um, cnidarians, which are animals like jellyfish, corals, and anemones, Mollusks, which are uh, which include octopus, squid, snails, clams, things like that, things with a squishy body and a shell. Uh, echinoderms, which I love. These are sea stars, sea urchins, um, sea cucumbers, brittle stars. I love them. Uh, also arthropods. So there are land arthropods. You know those as bugs or insects. Um, but in the ocean, there are a couple of different types of arthropods, including crustaceans like crabs, shrimps, lobsters. Um, there's also these things called sea spiders that I am not a giant fan of, but I'll talk about. Uh, and um, some um, other crustaceans as well. Uh, and then we'll talk about or the, the marine biology also includes the study of the vertebrate animals that live in the ocean. And I don't know why I haven't fixed this, but that... It, there's one missing. Uh, we'll talk about reptiles, birds, mammals, and the most prevalent vertebrate in the ocean. You guys? Anybody? Yeah. Fish. Why isn't that on there? Why haven't I put that on there? I don't know. Fish. Fish. We're going to talk a lot about fish. Fish are everywhere in the ocean. 
I'm fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, so marine biologists and oceanographers, uh, again, they study different things, but they sometimes overlap. And generally, when you're a research scientist like a marine biologist or an oceanographer as a profession, you specialize in something very specific in the ocean. You specialize on a group of animals, a species of animals. You might, as an oceanographer, specialize in... Um, in a specific areas abiotic factors or a certain type of geology that occurs around or in the ocean. Um, you might just study ocean water um, chemistry or how it moves its currents and waves, which is really an, a really important area of study right now. Um, but they, they overlap. If you're a marine biologist, if you're studying an organism, you need to know what that organism needs from its environment. You need to know what pH of water and salinity of water that it prefers or needs to live in, right? And if you are an oceanographer and you're studying uh, the geology of tidal pools, you need to know what to expect to see living in those, right? Things like that, okay? They overlap. But scientists, man, they're experts. They know stuff. They know a lot of stuff. So who cares? Why are we studying this? Why is this even a class? Because it's awesome. Also, uh, marine biology and oceanography. The ocean right now is a, a very important area of study because um, a, it's the origin of life. That's where life started. The current, there are two hypotheses about where life started. Both of them are in the ocean. Uh, one of them is in the deep ocean around hydrothermal vents. And studying where life came from tells us and gives us clues to where we came from, where life came from, and how life changes over time through evolution. So that's important. Also, uh, hey, you, we use a lot of the ocean. We use a lot of products from the ocean. We use kelp for food. We get a lot of um, medicines from organisms, uh, including corals, um, from marine species in the sea. We get a lot of stuff, okay? Uh, a lot of your food has a lot more marine-derived products than you might think. Not just eating fish. It's all kinds of stuff, and we'll talk about that. Also, um, do you like to breathe? I like to breathe. Marine organisms produce 50% of our atmospheric oxygen. We should know uh, how, to keep it, how to keep it going. And how it does that is really fascinating. Um, also, how many of you like to go to the beach? I like to go to the beach. I will go to the beach anytime. Any beach? Yes. Uh, it's a huge tourist industry. There are many countries in the world uh, that are on uh, a coast whose number one economy is the tourism economy. Tourists going to the beach, essentially, pays for a lot of people's livelihood. So we should know how it works and how to best interact with it to keep that economic flow supported, right? Yeah, you betcha. And then also, again, big, giant area of study right now that I will talk about until you're sick of me talking about it, the oceans regulate the climate. We would not have a planet Earth and all of the living things on it, including you, if we didn't have the oceans that we have. And we have to keep it safe. Water regulates the temperature of the planet because water, you remember from biology, the special properties of water. We're going to study those next week a little more in depth into how the properties of water manifest in the ocean. Okay. Also, the ocean water is the planet's largest carbon dioxide sink. That means the ocean is absorbing all of the carbon dioxide that we are pumping into the air all the time. It's about full. It's almost done absorbing our, our, our garbage, you guys. We'll talk about that too, okay? Any long-term or short-term change in the ocean is going to affect our lives on the planet, the entire planet. This is an ocean planet. This is a water world, and we've got to know how it runs. So that's what you're going to learn. Okay? What else? I don't know that. What else? Okay, so how do we study it? I said scientists are smart people, and science is always based on observable data. And that means research. There are scientists going out into the field and they've set up research stations all over the world where scientists go interact with what they are studying. They set up experiments either in the wild, they take data from the field, or they um, get observations from the field and then they can model what's happening in the lab 
um, on computers and mo other models. Okay? There are lots of facilities here in the United States. Those are some of them. The most important um, is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also called NOAA. Um, this is a federal bureau, a federal administration. Um, it's been a little underfunded for the last four years, but hopefully it will come back because they are the number one um, number one funding of climate research and weather research. Weather and climate are two different things that I'll also talk about. Okay. Uh, how else do marine biologists and oceanographers work? Remote sensors, satellites are observing the whole planet all the time. There's a there's an array of satellites between the Earth and the Moon, taking all kinds of measurements of our atmosphere and our water, and I'll show you that. It's super cool. We also use uh, sonar to map sea floor formations. Uh, scuba is a tool used a lot by marine biologists and oceanographers. You got to be able to dive. And then um, ROVs. This, oh my gosh. Remote operated vehicle technology right now is having a moment. It is huge. There are several research stations that are out in the ocean that use um, deep water remote operated vehicles to explore and film the ocean at the bottom. And they are making amazing discoveries right now. I will put, I'll, someone remind me to put a link to a couple of those ROV websites. You can watch them work. It's really cool. Okay. Uh, critter cams also. We have managed to shrink our technology, our camera technology, down to where animals can wear cameras. And um, there, are some, there are some videos. Some of them work. Uh, I'll link those as well. Okay. But we've put cameras, scientists have put cameras on many different species, especially deep diving species and migratory species, and they are able to see what these animals see. It's really cool. And then they can gather research and data about where they are and their population health as well. Okay. Um, research vessels, these are floating laboratories just out on the ocean. Um, research scientists can go out on the ocean for months at a time. Some of them are running those deep water ROVs. Some of them are doing other um, observations and um, um, gathering data from, from the water. Okay. Um, o Oceanos Explorer and Nautilus Live is my favorite. And again, I will link, I will link that. Um, okay. okay, why do we care? Why do we care? Does this matter? We are tied to the oceans, okay? Humans' very first permanent settlements weren't near the ocean, but they were in, near two rivers. But there's archaeological evidence all over the world uh, looking at early human use of coastlines and um, uh, not exploiting, but using the resources for food and shelter that are near the ocean. This is a satellite image of our Earth. It's a composite at night. Where are, what, you know, the lights are the people, right? Yeah. Where are the most concentrated lights on the coasts? We live near the ocean, okay? Um, of course, we've invaded everywhere else, but our first settlements are always near the oceans, and we do a lot of trade on the ocean. A lot of the stuff that you are wearing, that you are eating, that you are buying, that you are playing on with your phone was shipped across the ocean on a boat, okay? Oh, go. There we go. Um, there's a lot of evidence supporting this hypothesis that humans have always relied upon the ocean for our livelihood. We found clamshells. You don't need to write all this down. We found clamshells that have been fashioned into tools uh, 165,000 years ago in a cave in South Africa. Um, harpoons and fish hooks, again, hundreds of thousands of years old. Um, and we that shows us that we've been using the sea our whole modern history, okay? Um, what else? Uh, then we started to explore, I'm in the way, I'm always in the way. We, we have explored the open ocean for hundreds, if not thousands of years when we, when humans first um, developed ship technology, ships that could cross the open sea, boom, we went everywhere, we went everywhere. And uh, the first big, 
big exploration, open ocean exploration, was made by the Pacific Islanders and the Phoenicians. Um, and then um, also the ancient Greeks explored extensively through the Mediterranean and Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Um, in terms of more, a little more recent history, the English uh, and Spanish were big explorers, of course, the Italians as well. Um, the, 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 one of the most, I don't know, more modern scientific voyages was undertaken by Captain James Cook. He sailed around the world. He took naturalists with him. He discovered the, the he was the first European to discover the Pacific Islanders. Um, and Hawaii, they ate him. No, uh, he. There are monuments to Captain Cook everywhere in the world, from Australia, New Zealand, through all the Pacific Islands, um, through um, South America, Florida, everywhere. Okay, um, he. They did a lot of mapping and collecting and discovering of organisms that were not known to Westerners before then. And then, um, it, of course, Darwin, one of my favorite people. He did most, he, he formulated his theory of evolution, which, um, by natural selection, which is argued to be the most important scientific theory ever, ever, ever come up with, uh, while he was on a ship sailing around the world on, on the Beagle. And then, um, the HMS Challenger also was a naturalist centered voyage of discovery in 1872. So we've been doing this a while and we're still doing it. Humans, we love to travel, we love to explore, we love to learn, we ask questions, and then we want to know why. And so they, they, they gather data, and current science builds on all of this that, that has been done before. Okay? Whew, that was a lot. Okay, I'll stop talking. Your assignment for today is the Ocean Explorer Timeline, and there's also analysis questions, so it's two separate things. So what you should do is um, go to, after you've filled in the notes, you're going to hit submit on your notes, and then you're going to go to the next assignment, and you're going to open it, and I'm going to show you how to do it really quickly right now, okay? Oh, look at that. So if you go to Canvas and you click on today's page, this assignment is one of the links. You have two tasks in this assignment. One, you are going to do the ocean exploration timeline. It's a Google Draw, okay? So you're going to see when you open that, um, you're going to see, let's just open it. You're going to need to make a copy of the document. So make a copy. My computer's really slow right now. Okay, so you've made a copy. The first thing you do is you are going to drop that into your marine biology folder that you made when you watched the other video, right? Okay. So you're going to click that little icon, that little file folder icon. You're going to um, put it in. You're going to find your marine biology folder. I have a lot of folders. You're going to click on your marine biology folder that you made, and you're going to move it there. You're going to do that with every single assignment that you do for this class, every single one. Like I said, you can organize them into, full, into unit folders or ecosystem folders if you want. This one is extra. Okay. So this is a, whoa, hey, sorry. This is a Google Draw, and you are going to be investigating these different uh, humans who uh, explored the ocean. And what you need to do is put them in order on this timeline. So you can drag and drop the cards. Each card has its own text box. You can enlarge them to read them. So you'll look at the year, okay? Now, you're going to need to do some extra research on this because Sylvia Earle, she was born in 1935. Did she start working as an oceanographer in 1935? No, she did not. So you need to look up Sylvia Earle and find out when she did her oceanography research, okay? And once you've read through her card, then you can shrink it back down. This line across the middle is your timeline. It starts 3000 BCE and ends at present day. So you need to arrange those cards where they go. So you're going to put the oldest card down here 3000 years ago, and you need to make sure that you are labeling the year. So um, let, let's see, I'm going to go with um, Greek sponge divers. 
So Greek sponge divers, which, okay, fine, I'll give you a freebie. You don't have to look this up. But Greek sponge divers have been um, harvesting sea sponges for 2,000 years. So you're, I placed this card here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a line. I'm going to insert it uh, right about, I don't know, right about there. Okay. And then I'm going to insert a tiny text box right here. Double click. Oh, that's a big one. Shrink it down. Drag it. Shrink it. And you're going to put in two thousand years B C E or oh, B C E or you can put B P before present that's fine too okay B C E stands for before current era make it look tidy there we go okay that's not hard so you'll do that for each of those cards and then what you'll do you also need to oh Where'd that go? There it is. I still need tabs. So then what you need to do is you need to add cards. You need to make two cards. You're going to add James Cameron's dive to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And I'd also like you to look up the Okeanos Nautilus Live ROV ship. When did it start? And give me some three facts about each of them on their card. Make their card. Put it where it goes on the timeline. Okay? Okay. When you are done, here's how you submit. you will have this share button up here. What you're going to do is you're going to click share. You are going to come down to this part of the window where it says get link and you're going to change the link to Canyon School District so that I can see it. Do not share it with me. Don't put my name on it. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is copy that link. Link copied. And then when you come back to the assignment on yours up here, sorry, I can't get it to go into student view right now. Up here, you will have a submit button. You paste that link in the submission bar, okay? And then hit submit and it sends me the link. But make sure that it is a link set to Canyons District. Okay, there's instructions on how to do that in the second module on the modules page, okay? All right, any questions, please? Feel free to reach out to me if any of this was confusing, if you don't understand, um, if you need any help, okay? Let me know. Um, I, if you're working from home, I hope to see your face in class soon. Um, please also feel free to jump in on Google Meet on Fridays and, and introduce yourself. Let me see your face, okay? Okay, have a great day. I will see you soon. And be good, be kind, be safe, be smart. Bye!